Kipling. Honorable Speaker, it's clear that as much, Honorable Speaker, that you are not in this house when we enacted these standing orders, Honorable Speaker. If I can allow those walking out to do so quietly. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. On uh, Majority Leader. Honorable Speaker, I was saying, I was congratulating you for having interpreted these standing orders and appreciating that you are not a member and you are not the Speaker in this House yes. when we enacted these standing orders in the last revision in the last Parliament. But, Honorable Speaker, as you've said, Standing Order 20A4 is quite clear that a decision of Parliamentary Party replacing its no. whip or deputy whip shall be communicated to the speaker in writing. And indeed, Honorable Speaker, that is the right interpretation. And Honorable Speaker, I just want to draw reference or equate this to a football match. When you substitute or you replace a player, you do not remove and do not put in another player to play. And therefore, that was a gist of this standing order 20, 20A4 that you shall not remove without replacement, but you shall replace, as is akin in football matches where you substitute a player. Therefore, either the minority or the majority, if the majority wants to replace their leader of majority or their deputy whip or their whip, we replace, we do not remove. And the Honorable Speaker, it's also true that power abhors vacuums. And what uh, we are being asked to do is to remove and leave a vacuum, Honorable Speaker. And I really want to ask our colleagues, Honorable Speaker, to be patient and exercise patience. You have already said, Honorable Speaker, that nothing stops them, even tomorrow, from writing to you and express their desire to replace any member, be it in a committee or in their leadership. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, I just want to implore our colleagues to exercise patience to also conduct the affairs of this house with less emotions, Honorable Speaker. Uh, only yesterday, Honorable Speaker, when the Honorable Leader of Minority raised that issue on the floor. I remember, Honorable Speaker, when you tried to stop him in his tracks because he was doing it at the wrong time, the Leader of Minority became very emotional. The Honorable Atandi uttered some unpalatable words just like I've heard the Honorable Rosa Buyu utter today, like the Honorable Babu Awino was trying to do, Honorable Speaker, we need to conduct this house with some decorum, Honorable Speaker, including when you want to raise a point of order, you do not shout from your seat. You invite the Speaker's attention, Honorable Speaker, and for instance, Honorable Speaker, when I invited your attention, is on a matter also touching on the decorum here in the house that when you recognize students who ought to be emulating us as leaders and as their role models, we have a tradition and a culture in this house when you want to cheer, you foot thump, Honorable Speaker, but not bank tables, Honorable Speaker, and that is a matter I had wanted to raise about the Honorable Babu Owino. Honorable Speaker, I just want to implore on our colleagues in the minority, please, as the Honorable Speaker has ruled in his uh, uh, communication, put your hand